The question is the motion be agreed. The Honourable Kyle McGinn. Thank you, Acting President. Um, firstly, just want to thank the Honourable uh, Wilson Tucker for that um, excellent uh, speech. Uh, really great to see daylight savings uh, is uh, top of your agenda and uh, intrigued to see you weave it into more conversations like the Honourable Brian Walker and uh, his ability to weave marijuana into absolutely everything that we talk about in this chamber. Um, so I would like to thank the Honourable Steve Pratt for bringing the motion to the House. Um, I will be the first to admit that I am absolutely not a soccer fan whatsoever, never have been, um, and uh, quite frankly can't understand how it's such a big sport. Um, but uh, I'm a rugby league supporter through and through. <laughs> um, I'm an Adelaide Crows AFL supporter. Um, no. But uh, this is the worst <laughs> contribution. <laughs> but, <laughs> but members, this is where this is where this is where the turn of events will happen. Um, so uh, one thing that I am about with sport is I like Australia competing on the world stage, and that's something that I've managed to get behind uh, any sport, even soccer. And uh, I have to say, uh, you go back to when the men's team qualified for the first time in, I think, a very, very long time when they got into the World Cup. Um, but the Matildas have always uh, been something that I've heard about and watched closely um, when it comes to uh, Australia competing on, on the world stage. And the absolute insanity of this World Cup uh, is very, very difficult to hide from. Um, and I will have to admit, like the Honourable Peter Collier, on Saturday night I had an event I had to get to and uh, I had to be there by seven and it was quarter past six and I hadn't even had a shower yet uh, because the penalties were absolutely enthralling. The overtime was... I did have a shower after that, the Honourable Sam Rowe, just to be clear. Um, we managed to have a shower before the event, um, but... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it was unbelievable. The, the intensity in that game was just uh, something that, as an Australian, had, uh, had you absolutely yelling and screaming at the, at the TV. And then when we scored that last goal, jumping and dancing around the lounge room like a lunatic... Um, and it was something to really reflect on when this motion came up was uh, it was for me it was another a sporting event to watch and uh, support Australians doing well in sport but when Sam Kerr handed over her jersey to that young girl in the crowd um, that was something that I'd never really seen before on live prime time TV in women's sport um, and that went viral uh, that young girl uh, the, the, the passion on her face to see um, what it meant to her and what it meant to her for her future in sports in this country uh, really hit home for me how important this is. Um, and I'm absolutely behind the Matildas tonight and we'll be racing home to watch the game um, as soon as I can. Uh, and that's despite the fact that I'm not a soccer fan. I am absolutely uh, in awe of what this team's been able to do for people in this country uh, right now, particularly young girls um, that probably aren't soccer players, cricket players, uh, AFL, um, all sports, I think, will be invigorated by what the Matildas have managed to achieve in this country through in this World Cup. I, I take you back, members, to a story, a uh, true story about what happened with my sister when we were in the Northern Territory. So there's been talk about uh, uh, young girls having to play with men in sports if they want to play a certain sport. Now, my sister uh, was probably a little bit crazier than others back then. She, um, she wanted to play rugby union, um, which uh, in the Territory is quite a big, uh, big sport during the off-season of rugby league, and I played rugby union. And members, I was a big kid then like I am now. And my sister was a small girl then and still is today. Um, but my sister ended up playing, yeah, under-14s rugby union in the men's team, in the boys' team. Um, and there's, a, there's an iconic photo which uh, gets around our family every uh, couple of years of my sister getting lifted up by me in the, in the line-out in rugby union. And her arms and legs are going everywhere. And, um, but I look back at that now and I think, you know, my sister wanted to engage in rugby union, but there was no women's teams back then. Um, and that was a very physical sport, um, uh, getting injuries all the time. And she, she played rugby union for a season, uh, only a season though. 
but it was in, in the boys' team. And uh, I, I think the opportunities I had to play rugby league and union were abundant, and my sister didn't get them same opportunities. Um, so to me, it, it's something I reflect on during periods of now, uh, time like now, um, on how women do, uh, women girls do get disadvantaged in the sporting space. I will reflect on uh, another sport, a women's sporting team that I'm a huge fan of, and that's the women's cricket team, the Australian women's cricket team. I'm going to say this on record: probably the greatest Australian sporting team in history is the women's cricket team. They have got every single trophy. They have absolutely dominated the world stage and for years were just uh, totally under, underrepresented in what they had achieved. I have to say I want to thank the Australian women's cricket team for keeping my faith in Australian cricket after Sandpaper Gate. You know, we, we, I'm going to put it on the record. Australian cricket was in turmoil after the men's team was caught cheating with Sandpaper. And the Australian's women's cricket team was out there winning fairly and squarely and playing with integrity that I believe the men's team has now garnered. Um, both teams have just recently returned from England retaining the Ashes. The uh, Australian women's cricket team retained the Ashes um, and the Australian men's team retained the Ashes. And we gave them, them uh, English uh, men and women something to think about with Australian sport um, by doing it on their home soil. Um, let's just hope, as uh, David Warner, the cricketer, has said today, if the uh, English want to change the soccer ball tonight, don't let them. Um, because on day five of the Ashes, they changed the cricket ball and all of a sudden the ball was swinging and they got ten wickets. So um, be careful, Matildas. Watch them palms tonight because they have a sneaky way of, uh, of trying to uh, achieve their goals with a bit of dodgy <laughs> tactics. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> and let's not forget the, the the keeper doesn't know the rules of cricket about staying in your crease. Yes, but, but, uh, but you know, uh, Alyssa Healy, um, some amazing cricketers. Uh, in uh, they were called the Southern Stars before uh, it was properly introduced as the Australian women's cricket team. Um, but they have uh, always done Australia proud in the um, World Cups 2020 uh, 50 over game um, and. The biggest shame about the women's Ashes for me was that they only play one test match. And this is a disadvantage to all women's sports, I think, where they don't get the same amount of opportunity as what the men's do. So men's uh, Ashes, there are five test matches, five days each. Women's test match for the Ashes is one five-dayer. Um, and that one five-dayer went down to the last uh, hour in, in, in play and was an absolute nail-biter. It was one of the first test matches where it wasn't a draw for a women's cricket either. And you think about that, they play one test match, I think, every uh, two, to, two to three years. Um, so it was quite, a, quite really, really good to watch. And I know a lot of friends of mine that absolutely love watching the Australian women's cricket team. Um, also, uh, I did just see something pop up uh, uh, for people in uh, Perth today. Uh, I believe that there's cinemas that are showing the Matildas for free tonight. Um, and offering tickets, so get onto the Google, get onto your uh, the West Australian, um, because uh, I hadn't heard of that before. But the, there will be cinema screens that are giving away free tickets to sit in the cinema and watch the Matildas play. So, uh, so Barbie and uh, Oppenheimer have been outdone by the Matildas, which I think is fantastic. Um, so I also want to talk about Kalgoorlie and how proud I am of how Kalgoorlie uh, punches well above its weight. Um, particularly in um, that space of bringing up women's sports. Uh, one of the great ones for me is the Kalgoorlie Women's uh, AFL League um, that's getting around. The, the women out there are tough and the teams uh, absolutely every weekend go out and give it their all. I was down uh, at the uh, Railways uh, Footy Club cooking pancakes for charity uh, a couple of weeks ago and the women's game was going on right in front of us. And it was really good to see that you had the women's team competing with a crowd because they had it on at the same time that they were about to have the under 18s and the A grade and everything else. It was really good to see it incorporated. Um, and I think Kalgoorlie has been a real fast mover in that space. The women's teams we have, Cow City, Mines Rovers, Boulder City and Railways, um, very competitive. The, the game that was going on in front of us got down to the last minute and was won by three points which was uh, very, very impressive. I have to say, uh, 
uh, you couldn't see me out there because um, there was a lot of crutches and ice packs after the game, that's for sure. But um, the quality of the, uh, the, the football was spectacular and really well, well worth watching. And I want to thank the Goldfields uh, Football Association for how uh, they've incorporated the women's game into, um, into where the men's game is played because people have already for many years, and the advantage of the men's game is it's established with the infrastructure that other people have spoken about that women's game doesn't quite have yet. And I think it's important to tie it all together because um, at the end of the day, we are passionate about watching football and everyone should be given the same opportunity in that space. Um, I want to go into uh, some of the sporting facilities and sporting clubs that uh, the Honourable Sorry, the local member, uh, Ali Kent, for the Goldfields, has done a spectacular job on delivering for lo local sporting clubs uh, within the Goldfields region. And I know she's very passionate, um, not just about the Matildas, she's been very passionate about the Matildas, I have to say, um, but she has been very passionate about her Dockers as well, um, and uh, uh, very passionate about local sporting clubs and ensuring that they get the little things they need so that they can go on and, uh, and cater to the wider community. Um, so some of the projects uh, that, the, uh, that uh, Ali Kent, the member for Kalgoorlie, has delivered on um, since becoming elected in 2021, uh, and very proud to see is uh, there was the upgrades to the Kalgoorlie Bowling Club, um, over $25,000 to that. Uh, the South Kalgoorlie Primary School um, received uh, the Nature, Nature Playground. Um, we also seen the Cam Cambalda United Junior Soccer Club got equipment over two and a half thousand dollars. The Norseman Swimming Club training equipment. Um, the Salvation Army Youth Shed um, got a turf and basketball court concreted. Um, again, I think they are fantastic having basketball courts scattered around the electorate. Um, the Boulder City Football Club uh, got a commercial oven to allow them to produce food and to also do uh, sales so that they can fundraise, which is something that all the parents and volunteers do. Gold Rush Cheer, they got equipment. The Gold Rush Cheer mob are uh, very, very proactive out in the Goldfields region. Very often you see them at events. Um, we've seen uh, over $100,000 to basketball court upgrades in Leonora. A uh, small town that really does need that sort of stuff. Lena or Bowls Club, uh, they've got a shed that was put onto their area. The Laverton Racing Club has got a dirt go-kart track, which, uh, which is awesome to think that we could see people travelling out to Leonora to race go-karts around the, uh, uh, the, the racing track out there. Um, the uh, Cambalda Nature Playground at the uh, Harry Steinhauser Oval. Um, the Goldfields T-Ball Association, over $2,000 worth of equipment there. The Nullarbor Lynx upgrade. Uh, Nullarbor Lynx is uh, an 18-hole golf course that stretches right across the Nullarbor, um, and you play that all the way across and you end up at the Kalgoorlie Golf Course. Um, so there was some really good participation uh, with that one. A big one I want to shout out to is the Eastern Goldfields B BMX Club. So uh, Ali Kent worked very, very closely with the BMX Club on ensuring that we could get an upgrade to their track. So the BMX um, has uh, both uh, boys and girls participating in it, but it is very uh, good for young kids. I've noticed that families get involved, and the BMX, the Goldfields BMX Club, uh, has over 20 parents that are running this organisation and also holding state title events once a year during the WA Day long weekend. Um, so I want to give a shout out to all the volunteers within that BMX club who have worked tirelessly advocating Ali Kent and myself um, to get upgrades to that track, which is now done. And I also want to uh, give a bit of a shout out and because they are steered by some very good leadership with the President Eddie and Vice President Nicole do a fantastic job lobbying me and Ali for as many things as they possibly can for their club. Um, and uh, I think it's uh, fantastic. They have also started now doing um, uh, come and try days for uh, women alone um, so that uh, they can feel and get their confidence up. Um, so they're not into the big pack of uh, uh, men that have been doing BMX since they were uh, kids. Um, it's a good opportunity. And what they have found is that mums are giving it a fair bit of a go now um, because I have to 
say that mums are pretty much the lifeblood of a lot of uh, sporting clubs in regional WA and probably across WA. Um, but BMX, I've seen that they are the ones that are behind it, pushing it as hard as they can so their kids get the opportunity to participate uh, in BMX the same as someone does in Perth. Um, so big shout out to them. Um, big shout out to Ali Kent, who also I know uh, donates regularly uh, for Indigenous rounds, for football clubs, uh, for jerseys um, and for uh, catering events. Uh, Ali Kent does a fantastic job supporting uh, the local sporting clubs in, uh, in the gold fields, and I believe she'll continue to do so. Uh, I know that she will be absolutely ecstatic tonight watching the Matildas, uh, just like I hope that uh, the rest of Australia will be as well. Uh, great motion, the Honourable Steve Pratt. Thank you for bringing it forward. And uh, just like everybody else, go Tillies.